we might we come back from break with the hybrid model that we've been on so monday remote tuesday thursday wednesday friday but then i heard the week after that we could be coming back five days a week i heard that and trust me my friends i'm not going to say sweet i'm going to swamp you we'll probably go to what my idea is and i know other people have different ideas but i try and think what would be best for kids i think i would do four lessons with a quiz each Friday, which that ramps us up a little bit, but it's not going to be like, I'm not taking away all of your free time. I know that some teachers are like, sweet, now we can finally go through and you know, make up everything that we you know, fell behind on. I think we're in a, an absolute fine spot. I commend all of you because you were able to hang with me. We are further ahead than everybody, which is kind of fun. All right, let's get to the back of this. All right, so we are going to start graphing exponential functions, okay? Things that we need to think about when we're graphing. All of the right-left shifting is the same. All of the up-down shifting is the same. The vertical stretching and vertical compressing is the same. It's just the graph looks a little bit different, but don't panic. It's not a... It's not really tough. I think if you made it through the trig, you can make it through this, no problem. I think you all probably remember somebody saying, hey, would you take a penny a day and then have your salary doubled every day? Would you take that? Thank you. Perfect. Would you take that? Um, or would you take a million dollars to be paid to do something over 30 days? And, you know, the, the initial thing is most people would say, oh, I would take the million dollars. But if you do the penny a day, so on the first, so at day zero, you'd have zero pennies. On the first day, you'd have one penny. On the second day, you'd get two pennies. On the third day, you would get four pennies. On the fourth day, you'd get eight pennies. On the fifth day, you'd get 16 pennies. So basically, this graph is doing something that looks like this. Okay? And if you truly went out and figured out by doubling a penny each day for 30 days, it comes out to way more than a million. So if anyone ever offers a contract that they're going to pay you for 30 days worth of work, and they'll either give you a million dollars for it, or they'll give you a penny the first day and double it each day from there on out. Do the penny a day, and you'll be retired by the end of the month. Deal? I don't think anybody would. Uh, I don't think anybody would uh, not take that. So basically, things to know about this graph is it's rising over here, and it d falls, but doesn't cross a certain region. Okay. Like, you, you didn't have negative money, you know, working this thing. Okay, so that's kind of what you have to look at. So that's, that's basically what a exponential graph looks like. It grows rapidly. Things in real-world applications that are exponential, um, well, we've been dealing with this COVID thing. We didn't go shut down schools because it was growing at a linear rate. It was growing at an exponential rate. You know, one person infects two, two infect four, four infect eight, eight infect 16, so on and so forth. It rapidly goes. Thanks to COVID, we get to wear masks. We get to have a weird school year. We get to act like we have sports teams at school, but we can't go watch any of the games because, you know, we might have a big COVID thing. And I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm just saying we are living an exponential thing. Now, we actually right now are in something called a logistical model. A logistical graph looks exponential, but I'm sure you remember roughly a year ago, they said two weeks quarantine for everybody until we flatten the curve and then things will open back up. Well, that kind of became a lie, didn't it? Yeah, we did slow the growth. Flattening the curve didn't mean that we didn't... Um, stop COVID. We just 
had it more in a controlled environment where we weren't getting the exponential growth. And a, log a logistical curve has like an exponential looking part to it and then it starts tapering off. Meaning where you still have the rate of infections, but it's at a slower rate. So hospitals and other resources can handle what was taking place. Okay, so an exponential function, you have a number raised to the x. Okay, so it's a function that involves the expression b raised to the x, where b is basically some sort of number raised to the x. x becomes your variable, so your x is your exponent, where the b, base b is a positive number other than 1. So, you know, 1 to uh, an exponent is still 1. So if it's 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, so the base of the number becomes your growth rate. An asymptote is a line that a graph approaches as you move away from the origin. So an asymptote can be vertical, it can be horizontal, and then there's uh, a third kind of asymptote called a slant asymptote. Some classes call it an end behavior asymptote, but it's just what's happening as you go to the infinities. You know, what, what graph are you following? Okay, so let's just graph this. Now, I'm going to graph this one in green. This is our basic parent function. So I want you to think about a few things. Let's just do a little table on this. Let's say 2 to the 0. 2 to the 0 is how much? 1. Yeah, that's a little gotcha. I'm sorry. So a number other than 0 raised to the 0. So 2 to the 0, three, 1 to the 0, 2 to the 0, a billion to the 0 is 1. 0 to the 0 is undefined. Oh, great, great. You gave us a new undefined term. So, so if I plug 0 in, 0, comma 1, I get right here. And then 2 to the 1st, I think you're okay with that. 2 to the 1st is equal to 2. So if I plug 1 in, I get 2. 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So if I plug, I forgot 4. Oh, sorry about that. 2 to the 2nd is 4. And then 2 to the 3rd is 8. I flip flop those, sorry. Can't take me anywhere. And then if you want to 2 to the 5th, you're getting all the way up to 16. I feel like I forgot a number. Let's see, I got one, I got two, I got three, I got well, two to the fourth. So two to the fourth is two, four, eight, sixteen. So if I plug four in, I'd get sixteen, which is up here. Now, if I go backwards and I said like two to the one half, two to the one half power is basically the square root of two. Okay, so hang on, hang on. I just went backwards. Disregard what I just said. I don't know why I'm putting fractions in there. I, uh, I'm going to put negative numbers in there. Let's go 2 to the negative 1. That's the same thing as 1 over 2. So negative 1, I get half. Negative 4th, 8th. So this is our basic parent function, y equals 2 to the x. If you can generate that, you can do all of the rest of the graphs without plotting numbers. Does that seem pretty straightforward? Okay, so let's look at this next graph. This 3 is going to move up 3. So we take each of our points and move them up 3. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this looks like this. If I had this, this is the same thing as something being grouped. So this is going to go right three. So each of my points goes right three. So one, two, three, one, one. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and now we just went off the graph.
So uh, exponent, where you have an exponent with a number being added or subtracted, that involves the right-left shift. If you're adding or subtracting a number, that is still a base of a number. So it's being added to whatever the exponential equation was. That's going to shift it up or down. Okay, same kind of graphs as um, normal. Now, this, all of these, we have this line here, which is y equals 0. And that is called an asymptote. This one, because of that 3, the asymptote moves up. Okay, and again, an asymptote is either a vertical or a horizontal line. In this case, it's a horizontal line that we can't cross. We approach it, we get really close to it. Any philosophy majors, when you decide to get to college, there is something called uh, Zeno's Paradox. And it says you have a log. You have a log that's spanning across a creek. You have a frog at one side of the log who decides to hop half the distance of the log. Now it's halfway across the creek. Then the frog ha jumps half that distance, so it's now has a fourth of the creek to go. Then it jumps half of that, so it has an eighth. So it jumps half of that, it has a sixteenth. Jumps half of that, has a one thirty second of the log to get to. And then they say, does the frog ever get to the other side of the creek by doing that? And the answer is no, mathematically. Obviously, if I were to say, I'm going to walk from this wall to that wall, this is basically, I made it halfway. And then if I do half that distance, I get to about here. And I do half that distance, I get to about here. Now you half that distance, I get to about here. Half that distance, I get to right here. Half the distance here. Half the distance here. Theoretically, I get really, really close, and I'm sorry to make you feel uncomfortable, but uh, I get closer and closer and closer to the wall. Theoretically, mathematically, I never get there, but they want you to justify it in philosophy of why or why not would the frog get there. The math majors all get it. Everyone else is like, no, -uh. and then you know, then you're in a -uh, yeah, -huh argument, which nobody wins. Okay, so parent function. So I, I did this two to the first, two to the second, two to the third. So this is what this graph looks like. Now, this point here is the one that you want to look at for that. And then, yes, we have an asymptote that's coming across right here at y equals 0. OK, so notice I have this point here boxed in. That's the one that you want to kind of look at. If you know, if you can figure out where it's crossing the y-axis, your right, left, up, down shifts are going to be pretty easy. Because you don't have to go and generate all the rest of the points. So let's look at what this would do. What does a negative out in front usually do? What would mathematically you think that would do? Yeah, it flips it. So this is going to flip over the x-axis. The unfortunate thing is we didn't draw the graph in a nice way so we could see it nicely. So I go this way. Yep, negative out front. Flips it downward. This one this becomes my asymptote. So I get y equals 1. So now it's traveling along this line. I'm not going to cross that. This is going to go right 3. Okay, so I'm going to use this point here. I'm going to go up 1 and right 3. So that point moved. This point went up 1 because the plus 1, and then went right 3 because it does opposite when it's grouped. I realize as is exponent, it doesn't look like it's in parentheses, but this entire thing is the exponent here. 
And then you can do the rest with all your points. Oh, okay. So I'm going to go up one, right three. Up one, right three. And then you get to a point where you can't really graph anymore because things get relatively large. So the purple is, you can see the easy shifts from the y equals 2 to the x. If you change that base 2 to like a 3 or a 4, that's just going to change how quickly it grows vertically. But if you draw the parent function in and then you show the shifting upon that, it's kind of similar to what I was doing with the sine and cosine graphs. You, know, you have everything already in place. You put the original and then you can start showing the shifting. Questions? All right, parent function again. We have this point, this point, here, here. Uh, it was supposed to be so much nicer. Parent function's there. What do you think this three does? Yeah, sorry. It, all of these, they will stay uh, horizontal for these. Yeah, vertical will take place in the next chapter. Actually, vertical, horizontal, and slant take place in the next chapter, but not this chapter. So all horizontal. This three will triple our y values. So this is no longer one, it's now three. It does, it's not moving, the asymptote's not moving, it's just tripling how fast it's going to grow. Uh, this two is going to be now a six. This three is not, or wait, this eight is now going to be, um, that eight's going to be like way up here at a 24. Notice the asymptote didn't change, just the steepness of it changed. Okay, so I'm just looking at the graph itself and going from there. Okay, this negative flip over x axis, multiply y values by half or by 0.5. Okay, so I'm looking back at this point. That's my original. So I'm going to flip over here. It's going to come down here to negative 1, but I'm going to multiply it by 0.5, so it actually happens right here. This value, I'm going to make it negative 2, negative 2, and I'm going to multiply it by 0.5, so that's going to happen at 1. This point here, this 4, it's going to become negative 4, and then I'm going to take half of it, so I get to 2. This 8... It's going to be negative 8 multiplied by 0.5, so I get 0.4, or roughly 4. So what's going to happen here is there's my graph. Actually, if that's 2, then this point should be right here. Clear as mud. Asymptotes stayed the same. Again, an asymptote is something that deals with, you look more at your end behavior, what you're approaching. Uh, a horizontal asymptote affects your range. It doesn't affect your domain. Okay? So the domains for all of these are going to be negative to positive infinity. The range of these two will be from rounded bracket 0 to infinity, the range of this one will go from uh, will go from negative infinity, so you go bottom to top to zero. Okay, and again the domains I can plug any numbers in, get anything out. I might get tiny little fractions where I'm kind of close to something, but I'm not going to get there. All right.
So what does 3 to the x look like? Well, same idea. 3 to the 0 is going to be 1. 3 to the first is 3. 3 to the second is 9. 3 to the third is 27, so it's off our graph. So this looks very similar. The only thing that changed was really after my y-intercept, how it grew. It grew steeper faster because of, of the 3. I still have an asymptote down here of y equals 0 is the asymptote. So if I look at this one, <clears throat> I'm going to double my y value and I'm going to go left in the x direction by 2. So if I double my y value, so this became 2, but then I'm going to shift it left 2. So notice where the starting points shifted to. Okay, do the same thing here. I'm going to double this, so that's going to become 6. It goes left 2. Double 9, this goes way up to 18. Left 2. And it looks the same, it's just shifted. This one, it's going to flip over the x. Grow vertically by 0.5. So I'm going to flip it over. So this would have been a 1. Multiply by 0.5. It's here. This 3 goes to negative 3. Multiply that by uh, 0.5. Half of 3 is 1.5. This 9 becomes negative 9, which is then 4.5, which is here, roughly. And that's what that one looks like. Good in the hood. This still has a, the same asymptote. This asymptote is consistent with all of them. Anything else I got? Let's see that. Oop. Generalize. Okay, that. Okay, that. All right. Cool. So let's fill in the gaps. All right. All exponential functions of form y equals a times b raised to the x. Remember, order of operations, you take care of the b value and its exponent first, and then multiply by the a value. Don't go a times b and then raise it. Order of operations, PEMDAS. So all exponential functions in the form a, y equals a times b raised to the x will have a point at... Basically, 0, 1. Okay? All exponential functions in y equals a times b to the x will have an asymptote at y equals 0. All exponential functions in y equals a times... Whoops, whoops, go away. All exponential functions in form y equals a times b to the x will have a domain of negative to positive infinity. If the a value is positive, the range will go from 0 to infinity. Notice it's a rounded bracket on the 0 for a reason, because that's an asymptote. We approach it, but we don't cross it. And then, and then, and then, how do we generalize our changes if we have the point? So. If we have x minus h, it goes right h. If we have x plus h, it goes left h. The asymptote is still going to be y equals 0 because we're not adding or subtracting anything to the outside. 
the domain and range. Domain and range. The domain will still be negative to positive infinity. The range will be 0 to infinity. And this is assuming it's not flipping over. It's assuming our A value is positive. move on. Last step, I think. Generalize. This will have the point 0, comma k. The asymptote becomes um, no, I take that back. 0, comma k. I'm off. I'm off. Not 0, comma k. The asymptote here is going to be y equals k. This is going to be it'll be a plus k. The reason it's a plus k is if I have b is a number raised to the 0 power, b to the 0 is 1, and then 1 times a, so I guess I could clean that up a little bit. This could be rethought of, of looking like this. So that could be take place. The domain and range. Domain still stays the same as negative to positive infinity. The range becomes k to infinity. And again, this is assuming that our a value is positive. Do I have any more notes on this page? I do? OK. Anyone remember what time we get out of here? Okay. We should be all right. Oops, I did that. Was this the last two or is there more? I'll summarize that. Okay, that, that. Oh, wait. What is that? Okay. All right. All right, so find the equation. Okay, so this is our first point we know. Remember that's normally here. It's normally here. So this went right uh, 1. Our, this value here, that's our k value. In this case, it's going to be 0. So the equation of this one is going to be, it doesn't look like it's growing any faster. So this is going to be a I'm not going to worry about. It doesn't look like I'm growing faster. So the a we can ignore. So I'm going to say b raised to the is that half that's half everyone fall, think that's half so I'm going to go half is my a b we could go 2 because we don't have anything else to give us from that and then I'm going to go take that back my gosh stir up come on man come on man all right because this point shifted, that should have been the y-intercept. So all that's going to affect is my, um, let's see, that's going to be 2 raised to the x minus 1. And that's my equation, y equals x to the 2x, or y equals 2 raised to the x minus 1. It didn't shift up or down, so we didn't have to worry about that. So let's look at this point here. So that's going to be x plus 3. That's going to go in here. Our asymptote appears to be, our k value appears to be negative 2. When looking at it, this a value is going to be negative. I don't really have a number out front, so I'm going to go negative 2 raised to the x plus 3, and then minus 2, because the, um, the negative here flips it over. This changes our asymptote. All right, so the graph here passes through the point h comma k, 
And this is the y-intercept. In order to find the y-intercept, so you're going to have an asymptote of y equals k. And it's shifted horizontally. So it shifts horizontally h to the right, being that it was a negative h. And it shifted vertically k up if it's positive k, if negative h is in there. Last slide, I think, right? I think it's an easier one, though. Identify the y-intercept and the asymptote. So the asymptote of this one is going to be y equals 3. The y-intercept is going to be 7 raised to the 0 plus 3. So that's 1 plus 3, which is equal to 4. So my y-intercept will be 0, 4 as a y-intercept. And this is our asymptote. Uh, this particular one, our y-intercept, our y-intercept, think about this. In order to find, so I, I'm, there's a plus zero here, so my asymptote is going to be y equals zero. But if I wanted to find my, where it crosses the y-axis, I'm going to plug zero in. Zero plus two is two. Four squared is 16. 16 times six is, what is that, 96? And there's your y-intercept. I don't think I would ever give you a graph like that ever, 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 ever. That's all of them, right? Let's just see what I can give you for some sort of an assignment. That'll be, we'll try and go over on Monday. 9A. You guys want a lot of homework? Come on. What do you say we do? 9A odds. Sound good? That'll be for Monday.